practices that are common in the African American community. I see you have a um, a picture of a thy of um, fibroids. fibroids. Yes. Yeah. So can we talk about that? This is very interesting. I wonder if you can see this picture. I wonder if you can see this picture. This is very. Can you see my cameraman? Oh right. So my get my viewers are seeing it. This is very important. I know so many of you called in and sent questions talking about asking about fibroids and I couldn't really give answers because that's not my forte. We are lucky to have Dr. Um, Sayed today. She's going to talk to us about how to take care of this situation being that we are really predisposed to having um, thyroids. Sorry, to having fibroids. 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 It sounds similar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fibroid tumors. Are benign tumors benign so you don't have to worry that they're going to cause cancer there is has been a recent worry about cancer in the thigh uh, in the fibroid mm -hmm. and that's called uh, fibros uh, sarcoma of the tumor sar mm -hmm. sarcoma changes of the fibroid tumor so when sarcoma occurs it's a which is a malignant condition of the thyroid tumor sorry mm -hmm. fibroid tumor you got <laughs> I got you now they're raising thyroid okay Fibro okay. tumor, mm -hmm. it can be devastating. So one of the most important changes which occurred in this in the United States the last five years is that we were removing the fibro tumors from the body by a process called morselation. I just want to mention this because of the fact that I mentioned about malignancy. Mm -hmm. So what tumors were being ref were removed, and when they were tested they were not actually causing, uh, they were not fully tested properly by the pathologist. Some of the tumors which remained in the body because of morselation where they actually removed by coring out the fiber, some pieces fell down into the body and they were not, ben they were not benign, they were malignant, mm -hmm. or they were sarcomas. Mm -hmm. And the woman, this particular physician was a physician in Boston, mm -hmm. she actually developed uh, sarcoma. Oh, Rudy, and I'm sorry, Doctor. One second, Rudy. Please, can you have our guests put down the volume a little bit so that we can hear the doctor? Okay, go behind the camera. Our viewers don't want to see you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I, I want to actually uh, mention uh, that as a result of uh, this occurrence, tragic occurrence in a young lady who died, a mother of six. Wow. In her 40s, after removing a fibroid, which is a benign condition, the entire, there was a change.org. Yes. And a million people signed on to it. And the morselation, as we know it today, was discontinued. Okay. In the treatment of the fibroid tumors by minimally invasive surgery. Mm -hmm. So now we don't have that um, modality, mm -hmm. but we do still engage in different modalities to remove the fiber tumor. Mm -hmm. So fiber tumor, I just want to go re-emphasize, re it mm -hmm. is a benign condition, so don't get panicky. Yes. Oh my God, I got just tumors and they might cause cancer. Yes. The, ch the chance of getting a cancer is 0.5% Okay. in the fiber tumor, and that remains still. Uh -huh. So what then uh, can we do about fibers? Mm -hmm. what, are, what are fibers? Each muscle cell, mm -hmm. Each muscle cell of the myometrium of the uterus, uterus has three layers. Yes. The serosa, which is the covering of the uterus. Yeah. The muscle layer is called myometrium. Yeah. And the last is endometrium. Yeah. Endometrium is the lining of the uterus where the baby resides, okay? Yeah. And when the babies are born, they actually grow in the endometrial cavity. Yeah. So myometrium, each muscle cell has the potential to become a tumor. Oh. And and what is the stimulating factor? Yeah. Is estrogen. Oh, so it is mean. most common in the reproductive age group. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's when it affects fertility. Yeah. So fibers have been blamed for fertility reduction. Yes. They've been blamed for bleeding throughout the any age group from twenties all the way up till forties, uh, fifties. Yeah. They can bleed. Yeah. And they can also cause. Uh, malignant changes in the older age group. Yeah. But the, the, the way the 
fibroid is placed in the uterus makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I would like to discuss the three places where the fibers occur. Okay. And this is seen in the picture. Mm -hmm. One is called subserosal, yeah. which is coming out like a potato bud yes. out of the uterus. Yes. And it can, it can pre become pretty large, but it really doesn't affect so much the quality of bleeding. Because it's outside. It's outside. It doesn't okay. affect the cavity of the uterus. Yeah. Second is intramural. Yeah. Intramural means in the muscle. In the muscle. In the muscle. Yeah. And it can jut into the cavity. Yeah. And therefore that intramural can affect yeah, yeah, the, the fertility as well as um, the quality of bleeding that people yeah. can have. Yeah. The worst is submucus. Okay. It's it is in the cavity. Inside. Or intra cavity yeah. hanging inside. Yeah. And it can either be hanging with the yeah. scarf yeah. or it can hang only partially, yeah. uh, it's called sessile tumor, mm -hmm. uh, but it can definitely affect bleeding. It can yeah. cause cramps and severe bleeding episodes. Yes. So, to remove these fibroids, <coughs> mm -hmm. so. we have to go inside the cavity and yeah. remove this. And clip it. It's called hysteroscopic removal. Okay. We continue to do morselation in this mm -hmm. because it's in a contained cavity, mm -hmm. so it cannot go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So we can remove this tumor completely yeah. under vision. The second is removing this. Yeah. It'd be very hard. We okay. go through the laparoscope. We have to incise on the uterus, make yeah. an incision on the uterus, mm -hmm. and gouge this tumor out, yeah. and then repair the uterus. Yes. <coughs> it is useful for a person who actually is. is Can I a, some water, please? I have the water right there. Okay. <coughs> it's okay. Okay. No it's okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, at least we can do is give you water. We've been talking how many hours now? Okay, so so basically, mm -hmm. uh, removing of the fibroid is 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 difficult difficult to do. Depending but on the position, impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when people in their forties and they had four children. Preserve the uterus yeah. and remove all the fibroids. That is unreasonable. Okay. Why do a five-hour surgery yeah. to remove all the fibroids when your uterus has finished its function? Yeah. The only function of the uterus being procreation. Yes. Nothing else. Yes. So then remove the uterus. And you're bleeding. You become anemic. So yeah. remove the uterus. So if because you remove the uterus, what about? <coughs> would you have severe um, changes like? your estrogen levels and yes, all those hormonal that's common, levels. Yeah, that's a common question. Yeah. And the question is, no. Wow. And the answer is no, because you the uterus the does ovaries. not produce hormones, it's the ovaries. Okay. We can, removing the uterus, hysterectomy, mm -hmm. doesn't bring changes. Mm -hmm. Only the removal of the ovaries, ovaries bring menopausal changes. Okay. So, removing the uterus is definitely indicated when you're completely childbearing. Yeah. And your you and you have multiple fibroids causing bleeding and anemia mm -hmm. and making you fatigued and unable to function in your uh, continual uh, daily activities and messing up your figure yes <laughs> that too <laughs> that too so uh so the last the removal of this tumor mm -hmm. is easier the removal of this tumor or this tumor mm -hmm. sometimes the subserosal tumor can hang in a stock yes and it's very easy to remove it okay so just cut off the breast supplies, suture the uh, uterus, yes. and you can remove the tumor. So how do we remove it now? Yeah. If you don't cannot morselate, morselation means making it smaller and coating it out. Yes. <coughs> so remove this word, put it in a bag, and we can morselate it inside the bag. You put it in a bag? <coughs> how do inside you? the body, we put in a bag, uh, a special bag, uh -huh. which is introduced. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to take the more water. <laughs> <coughs> wow, this is very interesting. Morselation. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for my listeners for bearing <laughs> with me. Thank you. <laughs> so, it can be removed in a bag. Mm -hmm. That's a special technique. We are still trying to find techniques by which there's no spillage okay. of the cells from these fibroids Just in into case. the Cavity. body mm -hmm. and uh, with, uh, preventing the danger of getting a sarcoma. Okay. So, that being said, uh, repairing the uterus mm -hmm. after removal of the fibroids, especially for a woman who wants to get pregnant, mm -hmm. can be quite a challenging surgery as mm -hmm. well as challenging recovery. Yes. It's a four or five hour surgery depending upon 
how many tumors you have to remove. Yes. And repair the uterus. And then there can be scar tissue yes. as a result of this. And you can see the scar tissue right here. Yeah. But the intestines can get stuck. Oh, the intestines can get stuck. The tubes, the... Yeah, the tubes oh can get uh, adhesions yes. to the uh, uterus. Yes. And can prevent pregnancy. Oh, <coughs> yes. Mm. So many people. The changes in a woman's body yes. uh, with menopause. Um, would this help to describe yes, menopause? Yes, okay, right. so let's go. Let's talk about menopause and the so changes. Just want to, for the audience sake, I want to mention this is the vagina. Okay. This area is the bladder. Yes. This is the rectum. Yes. This is the uterus. Yes. And the cervix. The only thing which you can see when you are doing, when doing a pap smear is only this. Yes. Cervix. Okay, and the uterus and the ovaries mm -hmm. cannot be seen yes. uh, when doing a regular pap smear. Yeah. So for that reason, we have ultrasound, right? We yes. Ultrasound. Yes. To be able to see the lining of the uterus mm -hmm. and to see the ovaries and the tubes. Yeah. Why are they important in menopause? Is because the increasing rate of ovarian cancer mm -hmm. from the age of fifty to sixty-five. Okay. Fifty-five to sixty-five, the age of ovarian cancer. Okay. And uterine cancer. So lining becomes thick. So this lining becomes thick. Yes. Then we know when you don't have any hormones, the lining should become very thin. Yeah. Should not exceed four millimeter. So if the, by ultrasound we can say now this lining is really really thick. Mm -hmm. Then we really have to look into it okay. by, by doing hysteroscopy, taking a look inside the uterine cavity yes. and taking a sample. It's called endovaginal biopsy. Yes. So these tools are available very easily mm -hmm. in any country, any country. There are doctors who are providing this care throughout the world. Yeah. Well, I meet them. I meet them in global. Um, I'm going to Rome now for the International Society mm -hmm. of GYN Endoscopy. Mm -hmm. And they and have, taught me to do that. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we are able to look in, inside the uterine cavity mm -hmm. and take a sample. Yeah. Which is thick to find out. Yeah. Ultrasound sh shows that the tube or the ovaries enlarged. Yeah. As we know today, tubes cause ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. So if that's enlarged, uh, we really have to go in. We do certain tests. It's a tumor marker called yeah. ZA125 or yeah. carcino, car cancer antigen 125, yeah. which detects for early onset of uh, ovarian cancer or uterine cancer. Yeah. So, but menopause is a depletion of all hormones from your body. Mm -hmm. That means no estrogen or progesterone. So what can we do? What happens during that time? Mm -hmm. First thing that happens is everything shrinks. Everything shrinks. Everything shrinks in the vagina. Okay. Vagina becomes atrophic. It becomes less lush. Okay. It becomes less resilient. That means it doesn't expand. Okay. So even even introduction of a little for the pap smear, mm -hmm. it becomes very painful. Mm -hmm. And because the lining becomes so atrophic or thinned out, when you put in a speculum and try to open it, the vagina starts to bleed, oh. and a woman is screaming with pain. Mm -hmm. It becomes impossible to tolerate even this little in intrusion into the vagina. So, so sex would be painful. Sex would be very painful. One of the main common complaints is I have painful sex. Mm -hmm. So there are many medications available uh, to prevent this mm -hmm. or to treat it. Uh, we can't reverse, you know, age, okay. but we can definitely support it by giving external hormones. Okay. So I tell people that nothing which replaces estrogen except estrogen. Okay. So the best treatment for menopause is estrogen replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy. Is but, that, okay. But there is a, you know, stigma. Yeah. You know, you know in 1950s, mm -hmm. uh, in Hollywood, there started a, a cult, which was called Feminine Forever. Mm -hmm. And they started, Hollywood doctors started giving estrogens to women, mm -hmm. especially women to starlets and stars. Mm -hmm. um, who are getting older and they started using estrogen indiscriminately in high doses. Okay. So there was a lot of uh, uterine cancers okay. and people died of uterine cancer. Mm -hmm. So estrogen fell into disrepute. It was rejuvenated again in the in 70s and 80s. But they said, no, estrogen is good. It's good for women properly given, the dosage is given. A lot of research took place and they were reintroduced estrogen therapy. Yeah. And uh, the biggest uh, 
uh, study was women's initiative therapy, mm -hmm. which occurred in um, in the eight, uh, late 80s and eight, early 90s. And they actually were able to prove that uh, estrogen replacement therapy can be safe if provided. Okay. It is given with progesterone yes. in a woman who has a uterus. Okay. We don't have the uterus. Uh, progesterone is not needed. Okay. What is the danger of giving progesterone to a postmenopausal woman? It, it increases LDL and causes heart disease. Okay. So you don't so want to give progesterone. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. So you want to just give combination therapy is more uh, side effects than single therapy with estrogen alone. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the uterus, if the uterus is gone, yes, then you can give only estrogen therapy. Okay. But estrogen alone replaces estrogen. Mm -hmm. It re-epithelializes the vagina. Mm -hmm. It makes the vagina resilient and back to where it used to be. So we give only the lowest possible dose. You give it here? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. I do. All right. Do. Okay. So um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Lowest possible dose of for the, estrogen. For the, for the shortest period of time. Okay. This is a treatment for vulvo vaginal atrophy yes commonly known as the vva okay so commonest therapy is estrogen and there are other things available if somebody doesn't well, want dry to use vagina dry vagina you can mm -hmm. use lubricants yes. like ky jelly or other jellies maybe anyway, my patients are giving me are giving are giving mm -hmm. all kinds of uh they bring the internet and they bring all kinds of treatments mm -hmm. which is available mm -hmm. uh they use Coconut oil, they use Vaseline. They use coconut oil for, yes. oh wow, yeah. okay. They use, because coconut oil, as you know, is good for everything. Uh -huh. From eating to whatever else you want to do. Uh -huh. um, it is, uh, so they use coconut oil, they use, most commonly people use Vaseline, uh -huh. but I tell them use KY jelly, that's better. Okay. There are vaginal lubricants available as a suppository. Yeah. It's a commercial product which you can use. Uh -huh. There are many in the market over the counter. Uh -huh. Many people for hot flashes, they use black cohosh, mm -hmm. those are not tested. Okay. The only thing standing like an, like a, like an icon today is estrogen. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing, only person standing, mm -hmm. okay? That they, it has been tested, it's proven. Mm -hmm. There are two target organs which you have to be care, careful about mm -hmm. while estrogen therapy is in use. One is the breast because it can aggravate breast cancer. Okay. It doesn't initiate, but does aggravate breast cancer. Okay. It's adding fuel to the fire. Okay. And second is uterine cancer. Okay. So if these two are watched, there's no reason why right. a woman cannot have estrogen replacement, replacement therapy. therapy. Wow, okay, great. Uh so very much Dr. Desai. Um, in a little bit we're going to look around your office yes right? sure. and then you show us uh, where you work yes. what your your tools of the trade and all that <laughs> but before we go I know that a lot of people were wanting to know about um, like getting your body snatched you know yes. getting your body back together yes. right like uh, liposuction uh botox uh fillers um uh, which i'm budgeting for yeah <laughs> <laughs> what are the health dangers of these uh, procedures well uh if I, any as as a women's health provider mm -hmm. i have naturally uh kind of migrated to also cosmetic gynecology mm -hmm. so not only that includes surgery down below for tightening the vagina. Tightening? Wow, okay. The there is a laser available. It's called Mona Lisa, which can tighten the vagina. So we don't need to like cut and sew? Yes, we don't have to cut and sew. Mm -hmm. We can also, and the uh, advantage of laser, laser is also mm -hmm. it tightens the bladder muscles. Oh, wow. And therefore the incontinence also reduces. Insurance pays for this? No, none of the cosmetic, unfortunately, are paid okay. by the insurance uh, okay. people, as you said, budget and mm -hmm. do what is needed for yes. you. Know. Yes. Uh, I do recommend, being a woman, mm -hmm. uh, to definitely stay young, at least appear young as, yes. as long as possible. Yeah. I think we, we want to look young. Mm -hmm. Why should we not? You know? yes. I totally do not believe in growing old gracefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you believe I, in fighting it every no. step of the way. <laughs> 
you know, we should follow people like uh, Jane Fonda. You see? You know, Rachel yeah, Welch. Yes. And uh, people like Demi Moore. Yes. Um, these are gorgeous 60s people. 60s and new 30 now. This is 70s, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are uh, one of the things which is uh, propelling this movement is because uh, there is a second cycle of finding partners. Yes. In your 50s, 60s. Yes. So people naturally want to look young, feel young. And look good. But nothing yeah. happens. Which can happen only from outside. It happens from inside. Okay. So you need to exercise and build your body. Mm -hmm. Daily exercise, 35 minutes to 40 minutes, at least three times a week. Yes. Now they're saying 25 minutes, five days a week. Mm -hmm. You should exercise. The most important exercise, also to prevent osteoporosis, is mm -hmm. cardio. Okay. Uh, walking. Walking with weights. It reduces your, it tones your muscles. Yeah. And also it makes your cardio go up. Yeah. So you remain young longer. Yes. Wow. And be able to function and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't become dependent by the time you're 60 on your son or your daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to look after yourself. There's nobody for you. Mm -hmm. Only you can look after yourself. So, second thing, and remain more <clears throat> alert. Mm -hmm. Be mindful of where you are. Prevent yourself from having falls. Yes. Fall prevention is a very big thing big, to stay big. young. Yes. Because once you fall, only 25% of only 25% mm -hmm. will walk away from that. Okay. Twenty five percent die. Percent people die because of uh, being laid out yeah. and having deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Yeah. Another twenty five percent become institutionalized. Yeah. Another twenty five percent walk with canes mm -hmm. all their lives mm -hmm. or other uh, walkers. Yes. So it's a very uh, terrible travesty on life yeah. if you are not able to function as a normal human being. Mm -hmm. After you become healthy inside. You can look at other things like doing your hair up nicely. Mm -hmm. If there's lots of hair, you can, there are hair grafts that are available yeah. to look nice. Yeah. Uh, definitely, you don't have to frown all your life. <laughs> I just want to give you a little story about myself. I was in a in a store. I was buying a. In, I was only forty years old, yeah. and I was buying a pair of shoes. And a young man, who's maybe twenty years old, he comes up and says, "Why are you frowning? Oh, Why do yeah. you look so mad?" And I said, "I'm not frowning." And I was. I had terrible uh, frowns on my face mm -hmm. and I started using Botox. Okay. And that was uh, maybe 15, 20 years back. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I never regret it. So it removes the lines. You don't yeah. have to show. You know how they say, don't let them let them see you sweat. So wear underarm deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, that is what I would say about Botox. Yes. Botox is the best kept secret. Women. Beauty, beauty secret in a little bottle. Yeah. It is the best cap. It is it's no harm. If properly given by a person who is trained to give Botox, I think it is the best cap secret. But it's so expensive. Like it is not expensive. It is good for six months. Oh. It's better than using Chanel, which is for $200 <laughs> moisturizer. It does nothing to you. Really? Yes. It doesn't remove lines. Okay. Nobody can remove lines. What about fillers? What about fillers? Fillers like, are great. It yeah. lasts for, fillers are absolutely great if properly given. Okay. Because you don't want to look artificial, like yes. the cat lady, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to use fillers which can be not permanent. Mm -hmm. Because when you use permanent fillers, you can't change it. Yeah. So you should at least try yourself with fillers which are not permanent. Mm -hmm. um, they're excellent. I think in this country, a lot of them produce Juvederm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I use in my You office. offer it here? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, another question was, could you shoot uh, fat embolus if you do, if you do liposuction? No. Wow. No. Okay. If uh, fat embolism does not occur by liposuction, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, I have not heard of it. Okay. Um, it can ha occur with certain other procedures, mm -hmm. but we don't enter the blood vessels, large blood vessels. Okay. We are in the subcutaneous fat. Yes. Liposuction is done for the subcutaneous fat between the skin and the rectus muscle, okay. the fascia of the rectus muscle. This is all we are dealing with. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we are not going to be Give, getting into large blood mm -hmm. vessels which can give you embolus. Yes. Okay. And neither does it enter other lymph channels which, is, which are large which can go into this. Wow. We are suctioning constantly. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's, uh, it's not a procedure which is, especially in the office setting. Yeah. When uh, under anesthesia, liposuction is done with other cosmetic procedures like breast augmentation mm -hmm. or abdominoplasty, a prolonged procedure can cause deep end thrombus under anesthesia. Yeah. Say like famous person who died in this is Can Connie West's mother. Okay. She was only fifty or fifty-two years old, and she had her 
breast augmentation or abdominal plasty, prolonged liposuction of the whole body, mm -hmm. it took them 10 hours. 10 hours? Yes, under anesthesia, and she died right after because of uh, pee. I may be getting some of the statistics wrong in, in her particular case, mm -hmm. but similar to similar incidences can cause yeah. um, deep pain thrombosis, causing clot and in the leg and they die of that pulmonary embolism. Yes. In the office, patient is awake yeah. and alert and moving. Okay. We do under local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. That that is very very safe. In sixteen thousand procedures in a study, mm -hmm. there was no infection, no deaths, mm -hmm. no major injury. Okay. okay. I'm not wow. because when patient is awake, yes. injuries to the body does not occur. They can scream and then stop, you know. Yes. So there's no intra-abdominal injuries like liver injury or heart injury yes. or intestinal injury which can occur with the vigorous liposuction instrumentation mm -hmm. uh, under anesthesia. Okay, this, this has been a very informative session okay. and I thank you very much for taking time out. That was a long time I kept you, but thank yes. you so much. I um, want to thank the audience uh, yes. for listening and I want to uh, you will forgive me my accent which I haven't lost uh, from India. <laughs> we can understand. So. <laughs> I'm sure they can understand. Yeah. And at this point, um, please feel free to contact Dr. Syed, especially all the women out there who want to have some uh, touch up, some tightening and, you know, some help with looking good and feeling good about themselves. Come over to 50 Coddington? 5 Coddington Avenue. 5 Coddington Avenue, Staten Island, New York. I'm going to display or put up the, the contact so you can come over here and get checked out. Fibroids, she will take care of you. Um, taking care of your body to look good, she has all that down. At this point, we're going to go around and look at her um, office and see what she works with and see what she offers. Thank you so very much, Dr. Sai. Thank you very much Thank for having me. All right, so come with us. We're going to check things out. Okay. All right. That was a long interview. I'm sorry, but I'm Oliver Twists. I want more. <laughs> okay, so I'll come with you. So I just want to introduce, um, mm. this is my operating room area. Yes, yes. I do office procedures. Okay. This is my sterilization room. Sterilization sorry. room. This is my operating room. Okay. So I used to give anesthesia before, uh -huh. uh, but I uh, pr primarily pr uh, do office-based surgery yes. uh, with local anesthesia. Local anesthesia. Like for instance, I do the leak procedure okay. for abnormal uh, cervical dysplasias, uh -huh. and I do herpascopies. Yes. And I do what is called uh, endoscopy, hysteroscopies. Okay. In which uh, the uh, without anesthesia the person's uh, endometrium is checked yes with the help of a uh, uh, small cannula which is disposable yes. with the disposable cannula here yes which we attach to this camera uh -huh. and that goes into the uh, cavity of the uterus and we can look for anesthesia yeah, under without anesthesia we look for polyps or growths okay. fibroids okay so All right and I do liposuctions here that's oh you do liposuctions yes. here yeah I use laser oh. liposuctions here yeah. Oh wow, we actually do liposuctions here. Yes. Without oh my season. goodness. The patient is totally awake. Uh huh. And uh, that gives them the opportunity to uh, say if they're hurting yes. or if they have any problems. Yes. Uh, if patient wants to recover, also this is also my fillers room. I give fillers here. Recovery room, yeah. Botox okay. and fillers. I mean, you can do it any room. Okay. And I just happen to do it here. Okay. I do some uh, research. So we have bio. Uh, we have. Uh, Special refrigerator for that. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is my sterilization room. All the instruments are sterilized here. Uh huh. Okay. We have two sterilizers. Yes. And uh, this is where. I wow. And we have a crash cart. Crash cart. I know this cart well. <laughs> and we do the uh, defibrillation here. Yes. Okay. We have special special medications here for those people who have. Um, you know, hyperthermia or anesthesia. Yes. I used to use it more before when we had anesthesia. Now we don't because yes. we have done everything's under the, under local anesthesia. Okay. And uh, this is called the uh, a dirty utility dirty utility room mm -hmm. where all the instruments are washed. Okay. And they are handed over uh, to the sterilization field. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, we have this as our. Oh, 
Nobody's brought yeah, we brought you a little something. It's wonderful. I mean, we cannot stress you all these hours. I That's love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is our relaxation room. Yes. Then we walk over. We have a, a <coughs> handicapped oh. handicapped uh, bathroom because okay. it's very important. Yes. Um, so we have lockers for patients when they come in uh -huh. so they can keep their valuables. Yes. And this is my general examination room. I'll take you first to the reception. Okay. Five Coddington Avenue, people, Staten Island, zip code 10306. Be sure to make an appointment for the ladies out there. So this is my outside. We have yeah. a beautiful view of the... Friendly environment, <laughs> quiet, yes. secluded. Yes. Yeah, so you can sneak in if you want to. Today is a beautiful weather, as you yes. know, to Please. come in here. Yes. And uh, this is my reception, and our reception desk is right here. Yes. We'll walk in to the exam rooms. All right. Come on over. Patients, uh, vital signs are taken here. Yes, I remember here. <laughs> I was a student here one time. <laughs> I learned a lot from Dr. Sayed. Yes. And this, this is, is why, where... Uh, where the appointments are made. Yes. And we, this is our exam room. Mm-hmm. Very well equipped. So each each exam room has a table, yes. washing area, yes. all the supplies for pap smears is all done here. Mm -hmm. There's exam light here, each one is an LED light, yes. halogen lamp. So okay. wow. Then we have second exam room. Yep. Same thing. Yes. Then we have the You are room. very well kitted, Dr. Yes. Sayed. We have a, an exam, um, ultrasound. Ultrasound, moves. I remember. This is special for ultrasound. Yes. This uh, moves up and down. Yes. We have a patient bathroom here. Yep. Which is uh, so they can go to right after ultrasound. Yes. And this is a mini uh, OR for colposcopy. Yes, that's right. Yes, we have procedures it. here yes. in the office. And this is my bone density machine, which unfortunately I'm not using anymore because <laughs> they don't. The insurance doesn't pay to do it in the doctor's office. Oh. Okay. And uh, that's it. Yes. And downstairs is my business office. Yes. You know, yeah. That's amazing, Dr. Yeah. Say. Thank you for taking us around. My pleasure entirely. And thank you for talking with us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank wow. you for having me. I do appreciate <laughs> it and I do appreciate the audience. All right. Good say good bye bye. Time. Thank you. Holy, let me say bye bye to Dr. Say too. All right, everybody. It was beautiful hanging with you. Thank you. Good night. God bless. And see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.